Thank you, everybody, uh, for coming this morning, and thank you to, for, uh, to the organizers for inviting me to, to this Citrus show. Uh, today, we'll be giving a short update on the uh, project that we have in, in Imocali on individual protective covers, or IPCs. So this is the layout of our uh, pilot experiment in, in, in our center in Imokali. We have 90 trees uh, on the ground, for 40 of them, 45 of them, the, uh, the half of them are with IPCs and the other half are without IPCs. Uh, and they are subjected to, uh, to different uh, doses of, of insecticides. Um, Dr. Jim Graham, uh, la, in last Citrus Expo, he gave a very nice update of what we are doing, and he showed uh, the, some of the horticultural data that we are collecting. I will not abound on that, because the data that we are collecting now are really coincident with the data that, that he already showed. I'm going to talk more about the new project that we got funded by CRDF this year, this project has uh, four main objectives. The first one is assessing a tree health under the IPCs. The second one is assessing if there is some differences in the layout that we put in the, in the ground. That means if we need to put a solid uh, block all with, with covers or we can do some patterning that will be equally or almost equally uh, efficient and, and then will be more cost effective. The third one will be to monitor the transition between vegetative and reproductive stage in those trees under the covers. And the fourth one will be to compare this technology with some other technologies that we have already some experience like CAPS and, and others. Um, good news is that after one year of our study in, in Imokali, we see that there is all the plants that are grown for one year under the IPCs are negative for HLB. We didn't find any infected tree. For comparison, the ones that are without the IPCs, we are seeing that they are starting to show infection for HLB. Uh, you can see that, for example, if we don't uh, treat with, with insecticides, we have one third of the plants already infected if, if they are grown without the IPC. We didn't find again, we didn't find any, any HLB positive plant uh, if they are grown uh, under a IPC. Now we are interested in, 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 the, in the blooming of these trees and fruiting of these trees under, under, the, under the covers. And this is a picture that one of the, our collaborators uh, took and sent to me, and we can see this is a early Valencia, 16 months old, and we can see that, that it, it has some really nice fruit bearing on those trees. When we open uh, bags from, from these trees, we can see that most of the, of the fruit are bearing in, in branches that are bent, and one of the things that the IPCs uh, we have seen is doing is bending, bending some branches. Uh, when you remove the, the, the cover, those branches uh, get the, the, the normal morphology. But if they are enclosed in, in, in those IPCs, uh, they are bent. Uh, apparently, what we have seen is that most of the fruit is bearing in those branches. So we are going to look into that because maybe that's a very nice effect that we can potentiate. As I told you, we are interested in this project in, in uh, blooming and fruiting, and we are interested in new varieties for fresh. So we have selected three different varieties, US Early Pride, Sugar Bell, and Tango, attending to the different pollination requirements that seems that they, they have, and also um, to their ability to fruit set in, in, in absence of a pollinator. Uh, now, this is a mid or long term project, and we need answers now. Uh, so how can we do that? And to do that, what we have done is uh, 
what I would call a microcap system, and we have been doing a lot of different experiments with different varieties and different treatments in our center, and we are going to expand those. But I will show you just one result that we have in, in Sugar Belt this year that we started. So what we do is we bag individual flowers so we can exclude any pollinator and at petal fall what we do is, is we, we treat those, those flowers with, with 10 ppm of gibberellic acid. What we got in November this year was a 70% of fruit set when we opened these bags and the fruit was of really good quality a good color, good internal quality, and totally seedless. So we are doing a lot of different experiments in this direction. Now, in a project like this, uh, you can find some things that are totally unexpected. And this is anecdotal, and this is from two weeks ago when we had a cold front. Uh, we went to the, to the grove to take some measurements, and what we found was that the trunk wraps that we used to protect the trunk, they were all removed, but only in the trees that were without the IPCs. So, and, and none of them uh, were removed in the trees that, that had the, the, the covers. So, so the thing, what our best guess is that, well, this was done by raccoons. So our best guess is that in the, in, Inside the, the tree wraps, there is a lot of small animals, critters, lizards, insects that get sheltered there when, when, it's, when it's cold. And somehow it's more difficult for them to, to get into the, the tree wraps when you have the IPCs between the, the, tree, tr the, the tree trunk and the, and, the, and the wrap. So the raccoons know this and they only will, will remove the, the tree wraps without, without the IPCs. And that's, that's important because that's labor consuming. We had to put them, all of them back after, after, after we saw this. So in conclusion for today, by one year we know already that IPCs are able to prevent HLB infection in novel planted trees. And we know also that some varieties are able to bloom and set high quality fruit inside the, the covers. Um, so these this, this, this fruit are with no peel blemishes, good color and totally seedless. And for more information, please stay tuned. We, we have a, an article in, in the Citrus Industry Magazine issue for, of, of January this year, and we will have another update with, with, more, with more data uh, in October. But in the meantime, we are going to have two uh, citrus field days in, in Imokali. One will be in spring, in March, and the other one will be in fall, in October. And, and we will be we will be uh, showing, among other things, we will be showing this, this, this project on the field. And just to finish, uh, thank you to the Citrus Research and Development Foundation for funding this project uh, from this year on, and to Southern Citrus Nurseries and the Tree Defender Company for their help and collaboration and support. And that's all that I have for today. Thank you.